Hello and welcome to another episode of Discussion with Simone on Philosophy. Today we will be discussing about another philosopher uh, as chosen by Simone for no particular reason <laughs> and there is not, uh, not in any particular order as well. We have chosen to discuss about Voltaire. Of course he has got a French name. I find it to be difficult to pronounce it. But uh, Voltaire is one of those famous enlightenment philosophers. He has been uh, known for his writings and his criticism of religion and various social mores. So today we'll be discussing a little bit about him and his relevance in today's world. Today, primarily, it will be led by Simone. So, Simone, uh, let's start the uh, ball rolling uh, by uh, discussing about uh, Voltaire. Um, he's a uh, little bit about where he was born, if you can say, um, uh, and then about his philosophy. Okay, I might ask you some questions to clarify from time to time. Is that all right? Okay. Yeah, and a bit louder. Okay, looking at the camera. So, Voltaire, or as he was known when he was born, uh, Franco Emery Arouet, was born to um, a middle class French family around the 17th century. And mm -hmm. his father was a pretty well, well established lawyer and sent him off to a good school where mm -hmm. uh, Voltaire. He changed his name to obviously Voltaire and proved to be a really good student. He um, was had a gift for like writing, and when mm -hmm. he was young, he had one of his tragedies performed in the uh, in Fra in one, one of those really big theaters in France. And he went on to write lots of really well known and influential books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And. To start off, you'd kind of want to talk about the stuff you were about. So, he wrote something called La Henriade, where he looks at the history of France, especially um, King Henry IV of France, mm -hmm. and talks about that. But throughout the entire book, he's um, sort of... Uh, poking holes at French culture, at, at its aristocracy, its bourgeoisie, uh, bourgeoisie and uh, also in equal parts the church and um, the communists. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a different time of course and the church had a very large say in uh, the French state so uh, what Voltaire did was that he went to England and stayed there for around mm, two years mm. before publishing there okay and he really admired their culture and how at the mo at the minute um they had a protestant government and he admired the way that people would get together over stuff like trade and they'd set aside their differences this mm -hmm. little um note by voltaire where he talks about how religion interacts within a state and he says one religion is oppressive two would cause a war and mm -hmm. multiple would create a um, sort of tolerance a religious mm. tolerance and he really liked the idea of um, a state house where people of different religions would instead of focusing on uh, their differences talk about stuff like trade and money and mm -hmm. he believes that's kind of like a uniting uh, thing mm -hmm. among all people. So, so what about his ideas? I mean um, I heard that uh, he was not very popular in France <laughs> when, when he migrated to uh, the, um, their, their uh, so-called enemy, uh, England. Isn't it? So, so he wasn't, uh, he sort of um, shortly, he narrowly escaped being imprisoned <laughs> because of his views. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So what basically happened was that in his books he talks about um, mm. 
the uh, he talks about the bourgeoisie and he comments on how they're too small to really do that much change and they're not really that effective in mm. governing whole body and he also talks about the aristocracy which he views as leeching off the common people and they're really corrupt but mm. constantly taking money from the state he goes on to talk about how uh, commoners as well they choose to be ignorant and uh, believe in stupid uh, superstitions and mm. how the church is always really um, controlling and they uh, their rules are set to oppress. He had a very interesting view on religion where he he believed that basic belief in a god is mm. important for social cohesion. Mm. So his idea is sort of natural philosophy, deism, where um, you have a god that's created the world and instilled in us a sense of morality, you know, our ability to tell what's right and wrong, and, uh, and just kind of took the back seat from there, and the mm -hmm. rest is really just human behaviour playing out. Okay. He had interesting views on, relig um, on evil, seeing it as some sort of uh, construct by our society, there's no true evil, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then mm -hmm. he also wrote this book called either Candide or Candice, I'm not good at French, yeah, yeah. Um, where he sort of takes a look at optimism in a rather ironic tone because that was a really popular and prevalent philosophy at the time. Mm. And I, I think one of his famous books is uh, Letters from England, right? <laughs> so that's one of the very popular books where he wrote about uh, UK, the system, how religion is viewed, um, like um, which is right of everybody, unlike what was happening in France. Yeah, he was a really big um, advocator for freedom of speech, especially yeah. since most of his works were... Uh, tr um, most people tried to squash down his own efforts. He, he really advocated the idea that people should um, be able to share their ideas freely. Again, freedom of religion as well. Mm -hmm. Though, on the flip side of that, he did talk about something almost similar to Plato's version of the uh, philosopher kings, where he believed that you should have mm. an enlightened monarch yep. as the... Um, head of a state and you should have a council of philosophers around him which mm. is very similar to Plato's model obviously yeah. and mm. so so how how he differed from those classic philosophers Plato and Aristotle and oh no oh, that that uh, um, uh, range of philosophers how, how he differed from them I mean it's a different school of mm thought entirely and he was presenting slightly newer ideas uh, mm. he well um, people like Socrates would talk about like forms and ideas and stuff he talked a lot about society mm. and um, he was again a really big fan of reason in fact the enlightenment which mm. took lots of aspects of Voltaire's work was also called the age of Voltaire and the age of reason. Mm. So, so what exactly is meant by enlightenment? Like, what what is? I mean, before him, there was no enlightenment. Enlightenment, or what? What was the significance of it? I mean, that's actually kind of interesting when you look at the way uh, we classify movements. Mm -hmm. Is that at the minute nobody really? But feels like they belong to a certain movement of ideas mm -hmm. and they have people who they disagree with and people who they agree with but they don't say that they're they're part of a group yet and it's usually people who look back onto the past who say yeah mm -hmm. these this group of people they were philosophers of this era and this era and mm. that's basically how we see it and the enlightenment specifically is um looking at the world with logic and breaking mm -hmm. it down to steps and trying to uh, remove the idea well, not he it's trying to factor out any um, 
way that faith can affect your reasoning. He's mm. very big um, on like how you should have, yeah, you should have a belief in God, but at the same time, you're supposed to uh, still figure out everything through logic and still relying on the church. He mm. saw the church mm. as shut, shuttling down people and not really allowing the truest version of what religion can be. Okay, yeah. So back to optimism. Optimism mm. was a really big deal to the people at the time. Mm. And Voltaire didn't necessarily agree with that. Mm-hmm. He writes this book where the main character is chased out of um, his castle and goes through lots of trials and tribulations. And towards the end, he's sitting with a friend in a garden and his friend says, well, if you hadn't get or kicked out of the castle, if you hadn't lost all your money back then mm-hmm. and a range of other bad things, you wouldn't be sitting here mm-hmm. eating candied foods with me. So... That's basically an argument against optimism, saying it's kind of useless when you actually consider the stuff you've lost. And it's better to just face the world as it is, and optimism, again, gives you sort of sense, um, feeling of hope. Mm. In the book, he also says this one particular line, we must cultivate our own garden. And a little bit of context about this is that Uh, The main character hears about the death of a king and he talks to one man and this man says you shouldn't really bother with stuff that's beyond your control and Mm -hmm. you should focus on cultivating your own garden on your own personal life. The Mm. idea behind that quote is that the, the world you live in has lots of factors and variables that you don't necessarily have control over so one of the best Mm. things you can do is sort of accept the fact that you can't really change this and focus on changing what you can your local environment and stuff Mm -hmm. let's see he also kind of believed that um, there's this idea that before him a history goes through phases of like Mm -hmm. Um, you have your uh, regression, your stagnation, and your reoccurrence phases of history. But Voltaire believed in the idea that your history is like uh, human society as a whole is constantly progressing. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right then. Those are the major ideas. Any, any, anything else um, before we discuss uh, his relevance today? I mean,. Not much, but he did inspire the rest of the Enlightenment, and um, it, that's again one of the main reasons his name is used to describe it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. He he's um, he created a lot of controversy because again, <laughs> like like any other those um, very gifted uh, intellectuals, he stood for his uh, views. He had to leave his parent country and work from somewhere else. I mean, um, yeah, he's known for his um, his uh, assertion on individualism, isn't it? The importance of individualism, religious equality. So that is something which probably is very relevant today, <laughs> where the world is now reeling under this uh, religious extremism, and people are fond of saying, uh, "My religion is better than yours." So, in this juncture of time, possibly. Voltaire can uh, lit a bit of hope for people. So people should read about him and uh, understand the limitations of our thinking that uh, individual gods should not be compared basically. So that's basically what I thought uh, um, uh, would be the, I like the relevance of uh, this philosopher um, uh, in today's life. You have anything more to talk about that? Uh, not necessarily. I think I'm done. All right. So once again, uh, so thank you <laughs> for listening to our talk on Voltaire. Hopefully, you are uh, you got a bit more enlightened <laughs> by this uh, philosopher, and uh, we'll be reading more about uh, him um, in future. Our aim is not to give you an in-depth knowledge 
about a particular philosophy or philosopher but just to say something so that your interest is uh, inculcated so uh, once again thank you uh, until our next topic sometimes next week have a nice day thank you all